What up, players? It's Wolboss Tay up in this mud. This is how far we get today. We're tackling Festus the Leech Lord. So we're just doing a bunch of base primary colors on the majority of the model. There are uh, some details that we haven't finished yet, like all the doodads hanging from the staff. Um, some of the things like the, the bottles and ropes and stuff hanging from the belt. But overall, just wanted to get the majority of the base colors down. So here they are. Hope you guys enjoy it and stay tuned. Part two, we're going to get a lot more, hopefully, into finishing these spare or uh, finishing all little details and then getting into the actual shades. That'll be fun. So uh, don't forget to leave a comment and thanks for stopping by. Festus is a definitely hard, or not hard, but detailed and elaborate model to paint. Perfect for a character model. So it's, it's great to take your time and do him up right. So hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next video. Okay, players, we are gonna paint up this Leech Lord. So we're gonna start with Rackard Flesh, bibbidi bop. Now, when you're looking at the model, you'll see that the skin has a very sickly green kind of skin tone, and that's gonna be done with the glaze and wash. But the base for it is going to be Rackard Flesh. Oh, I'm gonna be sick. Go. Oh, oh my. So for those of you who do not have the book, the Chaos Co uh, Army book, it's not called Codexes, they're called Army books, Festus, Dr. Festus, was once a world-renowned surgeon. He's like a world-class healer. His fluff is very interesting and indicative of the um, of the, the, the dark, the grim dark, the fantasy grim darks kind of feel that Games Workshop just loves. So his story is that he was, you know, one of the, the best healers in the empire, and he just was really all about healing people, getting people who were sick to be better, and um, and he he just like there was a bout of of like black plague or something that he just couldn't figure out how to cure, and no matter how much he studied and tried and experimented, people kept dying, and so he would just stay up all night long in his little laboratory, and he would just try to study and figure out how to beat this plague and he couldn't figure it out. So finally he he was tired and broken down and in desperation he cried, please somebody help me figure out this disease. And lo and behold, Papa Nurgle did. He blessed him with the blessing of how to of everything about the plague, how it worked, what it what it did, and Having all of that knowledge just made him go cuckoo berries and drove him totally bat poopy insane and apparently also made him really big and fat in the process. So that is the backstory of Festus. That is why he went from what I think is interesting about the, the Warhammer mythos, a very worthy, well-known, respected, honorable, virtuous healer into somebody who was totally, totally crazy. I'm just moving the, the base coat, the base color of this Rackarth flesh all over because a lot of this stuff is going to be painted in flesh colors and or bone colors. So we might as well just get on with it. Yeah, like this poor little victim experiment of his right at his feet. He's going to be painted in dark robes, but his skin and his flesh and his bones are going to be showing through. <clears throat> so for the back, there's a lot of skulls and body parts back here too. So we're going to start by painting them back here in rack hearth flesh. So 
and these intestines. Like, you'll be amazed if you haven't, or if you're not already, if you don't already know the technique of using washes to achieve certain effects. For example, like to get a good bone or, or a, yeah, let's say bone effect. You just rack our flesh, wash it with um, like a griffin or seraphim sepia or even agrax earthshade highlight back up and you've got a great bone. If you want to do like a flesh tone, like a pale flesh tone, you do rack art flesh like we're doing and then wash with something a little bit redder like Raikland flesh shade. And there you have a very sickly skin tone, but it's still very flesh colored, which is kind of what you want, right? Boom, bada boom. Ugh. I think there's a hand here. Yeah, there's this guy's hand over here. So there are all guts hanging out from the backpack. One of the coolest sculpts, I think. There is so much, it is so busy. I usually don't like very busy models, but everything about this, the haphazard way, all these body parts are thrown into the back here. This little nergly helper. I mean, all of it is just really fun, interesting to look at. That's great. Okay, we're gonna take Mornfang Brown. Next, and we are going to paint that way. Let me find one thing brown. Did somebody. this as the wood of the uh, his his backpack thing and that will be a good base color for the wood yeah interesting it's there's like this sack like this red colored sack down here at the bottom which we'll get to So the reason why I like Dr. Festus's backstory and history, probably gonna make some mistakes and splatter the paint onto other areas, but that's okay. We'll go back over it in a second. The reason why I like Dr. Festus's fluff is that it is interesting. He doesn't start off as a disaffected, evil, chaos god worshiping bad guy mustache twirling villain he actually starts off as a good person that falls to chaos because he's trying to cure people he has like you know the road to hell is paved with good intentions kind of thing going on so he's trying to save people he's trying to find the cure to this devastating disease and because the only way to figure it out is by giving himself totally completely over to Nurgle it kind of like the double-edged sword he figures out everything about the disease but in doing so he kind of blasts his brains out and realizes like once he sees Nurgle's grand plan Nurgle lets him in on it and he realizes that he wants to be a part of it the veil had been pulled away and all that
Okay, next we're going to paint some Doom Bowl Brown, which is actually a little bit more red than brown. I'm going to paint this on the bottom of his little carrying pack, his little lunch, lunch box. as well as his apron. Hi. Hi there. How are you? Hi, thank you. Look, I'm, I'm painting up Dr. Festus, the leech lord. Gross. Hey, hey, hey. It's Dr. Festus. Hmm. Baby, it's cold. Oh, <laughs> Ooh. I'm listening to Dr. Festus sing. Baby, it's cold outside. Baby, it's not so cold inside. I don't know the words. Clearly. Dr. Festus, do you know the words? Nope. Hey, hey, hey. Looks like the Rackarth flesh is still a little soggy. So we'll let that dry a little bit longer before we continue painting. Or it's just gonna look like this, like pink. So we'll come back to that. What else can we do while we wait? Oh, gross. <clears throat> Why is this thing so gross? Screamer pink is gonna be the giant leech. Or not the giant leech, actually there's gonna be the uh, intestines hanging out of his backpack, so this thing. Honey, look, look, look at this. Look at these intestines. Yeah? Ooh. It's his, it's his, his brown bag lunch. He packed lunch. What do you think of this model? Ugly. It's ugly. Oh, why you be so mean? Okay, so I just cleaned up some of the areas that I had painted, uh, kind of splashed paint over. Like his right arm, I got a lot of the um, Warren Fang Brown on it, so I just had to go back over it with this Rackarth flesh here. There we go. Okay, so. Uh, let's take a look at what else we can do. Yeah, this weird looking tentacle thing coming up out of there. It looks like it starts as blue and then turns purple. Okay, so, honey, pass me the Sotek green, please. Honey. Pass me the Sotek green, please. And this, where in this junk pile do you hey, me to find hey, that? It is not junk, it's a wonderful collection of paints. I don't know where it is. What shade of green is it? It's like a bluish green. Sotek green. Right. I found it. Honey, I found it. It was over there. 
-hmm. It's a leech. Have you ever seen a blue leech before? No. Ooh. Notice in these videos, I'm so sorry, I'm paying, I'm showing off like my cork so much. This poor cork has been with me for like a year now. And you can see it progress from like totally new and pristine to just really nasty and gross looking. It's like a, it's like a redwood tree. It's like a mighty redwood. No, you don't think so? Yeah, Anyways, like I was saying, it's like a mighty redwood tree. Um, um, purple nurple. Nagaroth Knight. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? What don't you know? It's blue and purple. I mean, that's what it looks like over here in the picture. Steel Legion trap for the staff. The staff looks a little bit darker, but I think that as a personal choice, I'm gonna paint the staff a little bit lighter. We'll just shade it down with some known oil and Agrax Earth Shade instead of build up from a dark base color. So what's the verdict on the blue and purple tentacle? Honey buns? Well, it's only the first well, coat too. Yeah, I only just put. Why you have to... I gotta give it some some pizzazz. <gasps> Did you just say the word highlight? Yes. Oh, honey. So lighter purple or blue? Mm, like the tip would be dark purple and then it gets lighter purple and then it gets kind of like a muddy brown and then it goes to the Maybe like this purple? Or the lighter parts? Maybe you just, I guess. Or just add like a little... Voice. Yeah, you can do that. This is our model. We paid good American dollars for it. We can do anything we want with it. I like how there's mushrooms growing on his staff. <laughs> He's so gross. Okay, so I'm gonna try. Well, I think we'll, we'll leave that. We'll keep doing base colors. We'll come back for the... I guess as a base color though, is it okay? Is this like, are these colors okay for like base colors? Like first colors? Yeah, okay. It's on his staff. They're gonna paint the little dude. Okay, so we're gonna paint his assistant. We need to give him a name. Honey. What, what name are we gonna give him? Okay. Oh, look, he's what? on the eye. Yeah. <laughs> he's a he's a little cyclops. He's kind of cute. 
<laughs> yeah. He's like, ah, don't forget this leg. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of what kind of voice do you think he has? A cute one. A cute one? Mm-hmm. So the color that I'm going to paint him, that I'm painting him right now, is Celestra Gray. We're going to paint him this light color, and then we're going to shade him in order to get that blue tint to his skin. We're going to give him a nice blue glaze and shade. I think that's the way to go, yeah? Cool. I think I gotta give another coat of Rackarth flesh to all the all the pieces in the in the backpack here. Some of them you can kind of see right through them. When your paints are too thin, they uh, they spread when you're applying them, and then when they dry, the pigment pulls apart from each other. So you can kind of see all uh, see the base color or the primer undercoat underneath. So that's why it's it's always good either to thin your fi- thin your paints and go like multiple layers, do multiple coats. It's like white, yeah? Yeah, but around it it's kind of pinkish. Pinkish, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, we can... That's something we could do with the the highlighting, I think. I like his little chubby arms. Holding the leg. (laughs) Little putt belly. So we're gonna paint some a little bit more Rackarth flesh onto these pieces. Okay. Honey, can you read the the entry for that guy at the top? Yeah. It's a fill in the fans on Festus the Leech Lord. Festus was once a doctor whose skills were put to use curing the sick. Driven mad by the blessing of Nurgle? Mm -hmm. Nurgle, he was reborn as the Leech Lord, dark apothecary bound to service of the god of plague. Who's that? Nurgle. Okay. There can be few models in the Citadel range more wonderfully repugnant than Festus. Yeah, I agree. (laughs) From his pockmarked flesh and bloated body to the huge engorged leech that supports his crooked stave, every aspect of the miniature embodies the plague gods. So, here we go. Looks like he's coming along pretty well, I think. We are going to do now, uh, what was next? What was next? What was next? Um, well, if we're looking from the back, we could do, we could do some of the doodads hanging off of him before we go to this bag leech there and all this craziness in the front. Okay, so. The knife on the back, we are going to paint first with Mornfang Brown. Let's do any metals. We'll do all the metals now. I'll show you one of my approaches to doing rusted metal with the new paint range. And uh, you can see if you like it or not. So any exposed silver, because silver rusts and bronze and brass gets like verdigris and oxidized, all that wonderful greenish colors. 
copper and, and whatnot. So we'll let that dry. Wow, that's drying. Can I see the dude in the front? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that guy. Okay, yeah, let's see. <laughs> mm -hmm. That looks like dark silver, or not silver, I mean dark gray. Yeah, his robes. The little dude that he's feeding. Mm -hmm. He's given a, a tall glass of whatever that is, too. Okay, sure. Sure. Let's... What? What? That's so funny. Hello, his little helper. <laughs> okay, we're gonna paint Dark Reaper for the robes of the guy down here. It's really more black and gray. Dark Reaper is, has a little touch of blue to it, but once we once we wash it with some black, then it should be good. And you just want to double check the picture or the box cover, whatever you're painting to see where the robes are all eaten away in the front and where his guts are exposed. You want to paint, you do not want to paint that with Dark Reaper. You could even, oh, because he's wearing robes, you could even paint them like a, um, like a, a priest or an acolyte of a certain god of the empire. So. He's not armored, but he could be dressed in red robes, like a, maybe not a warrior priest, but maybe like an initiate or a lay servant of Sigmar. That would be pretty, pretty nasty. Or uh, even better, if he was in white robes, like a priest of the healing goddess Shalia, who Papa Nurgle just hates. He hates, hates her guts. He'd rather everything be all gross and decaying rather than healed. So, there you go. That guy's cool. Mm -hmm. Bella Core, that is a cool model. Okay, so. So it looks like our stuff is still drying. So we're gonna go on to silver metallics. You're gonna need to get your lead belcher, which is a base silver paint. And we're gonna paint the iron bands on the backpack this guy's wearing. So I'm gonna kind of be showing you like two ways to paint rust. The first way, is the way that I showed you with painting the met metallics with the brown paint first, that's like method one. And I'll show you a second method here so you can kind of pick and choose which way you like the best. This way we're actually, this uh, method two, we're actually starting with the metallic paint first. And then we're gonna do the rust effects on top of it once it dries. Honey, we have to name the little assistant. What do you wanna name him? How about Stuart? How about Barnaby? No. <laughs> How about hmm. Archibald? Archibald? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> that is funny. If you like Archibald, leave a comment. We'll see how much how much votes Archibald gets. I think most people are going to vote with you. Naturally. Because you're pretty and you're a girl. Mm. Archer. <laughs> Archibald. Okay, 
Okay, you're also going to be painting silver. These chains on Festus's, or the ones that are like securing the chain, she's securing the backpack to his border. His backpack straps. So there are four chaos gods for all you newbies to Warhammer out there. You've got the god of disease, entropy, decay, Nurgle, likes to make everything big and fat and gross looking. But of all the four chaos gods, he's often seen as the, the best one to choose because he actually cares about his servants. He loves his servants, he wants them to all live and be happy. and sometimes called Grandpa, Grandfather Nurgle, by his worshippers. All the other gods are out for glory and themselves, and Grandfather Nurgle is like the one that poor Warhammer villagers and stuff look up to because he cares about them. Ooh, incarnate elemental of fire, fourth world, ugh, and spooky. Hey, what else? Oh, we can also paint in silver the little medallion he's wearing. The little nerdly medallion. Honey, can you flip back to the picture of Festus? I want to see. I want to check one thing really quick. But, um, what's on? Yeah, what's on his stuff on his staff? Look at this up here. It's like bones and like his skulls. Stuff hanging down. Over here because that's got like this weird blue tint to it. Try to make it look like it's all hard to and stuff. Okay, so there are like weird blue feathers. Huh? That's weird. I don't. Mm. Oh, Games Workshop. Siltek Green. Probably just for the color. Unless the Games Workshop does like a masterclass article, I'm just going to paint this guy like how I usually paint my parchment. Their parchment is like a strange mix of different like brown and blue colors, looks like. Weird. Okay, rack our flesh because there are some skulls on the staff. And we are just about done, then we'll take a break. Mark this as the end of part one. And let all this stuff dry before we come back with washes. some Cadian flesh tone on anything that we know are skin bits. Cool? Is it cool? No, no, no. Can I go back? No, 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 no. What are you looking at? I'm just looking to see what you're looking at. I think you should paint these. The uh, Forge World stuff? Yeah. Monstrous Arcanum. Between what? Um, Forge World and Games Workshop? Yeah. Uh, Games Workshop makes more like general 
playable pieces. And Forge World has, they do a lot of bigger things, bigger pieces like ta giant tanks and all that stuff. So they, they released a thing for Warhammer Fantasy called Monstrous Arcanum where they have those big uh, monsters like the elemental, like those dragons. And they make them out of resin too, which regular games workshop stuff doesn't have, usually. Now they're doing more fine cast stuff. They got rid of all the, um, all the metal models. They said that, I guess they're trying to go cheaper. Fine cast is cheaper to make, but because it's cheaper, there's also a lot more problems. Okay, so as we are finishing up part one, I took some of that Doombo Brown and I painted the little um, area of his aprons here, both on the left side and on the right side. And, oops, also gonna need to take some lead belcher and paint the chains that are underneath the um, his arms here. I was looking at some of the video earlier. I'm sorry about the uh, focus. Sometimes the focus is just so out of it. I'm trying to um, keep this at a good angle, but the model is just so kind of funky. The great thing about Games Workshop uh, a lot of their new products in Finecast is that they offer 360 views and as a painter that is like the best thing that you could ask for because it allows you to see the colors from all the different angles that you don't really get to see in one shot of the uh, Games Workshop magazine. White Dwarf. And take Katie and Flesh Tone and one of the pieces which I'm talking about is the uh, little skin flaps on this poor guy up here. So yeah, the, it's really, really useful to go into the 360 view and just kind of see what color goes where. bit of this Cadian flesh tone into the guy down here to his face just a little bit gross this big maggot thing back here yeah there are all sorts of crazy effects we're going to be pulling off with the washes in uh, the next video Oof. Uh, 
Now you're gonna take your Screamer Pink, which we've painted the um, the intestines things. Screamer Pink, and you're gonna paint that on the little three little mushrooms at the base of the staff. On the top. And it looks like the maggot thing kind of fades to uh, a tannish color here so we're gonna put some rack card flesh back and it's interesting how it's so yeah, it looks really, really gross. It looks distended and um, very slimy. And it definitely does fade to like blue and purple up at the ends there. Alright, so we're going to wrap it up here for today. This is going to be part one of how to paint Festus the Leech Lord. Hope you guys enjoyed it. There's still some more details we have to give base colors to, but overall, I think it's a pretty good start. So, thanks for watching everybody, and we'll see you in the next video.